So today we are going to continue our talk about rational numbers, but we're going to soon introduce what we call an irrational number. So today is still rational. So this is 14.1 part one. And you'll notice that's a big jump from module three to module 14. That's because this is our first eighth grade concept, right? So you guys are in math seven, eight, so it's an eighth grade concept. So uh, today we're going to rewrite decimals as rational numbers, so as ratios instead of as decimals. And then we're also going to talk about finding square and cube roots, okay, squares and cube roots. So decimals are rational numbers, right, because I can write them as a ratio, which we're going to do today. And then square roots and cube roots are actually, some are rational, and the ones we're going to talk about today are rational. So for your key terms, there's kind of a lot today, so you're gonna definitely need to pause and get these copied down. So a square root of a number, so really this should be one sentence, but of a square root of a number is a value that, that when you multiply it by itself, it gives the number. So this will make a little more sense when we get into our next page of notes, but basically it's uh, two is the square root of four, because two times two gets me four. Okay, so two is the square root of four because when I multiply it by itself, two times two, it gets me that number four. So per, there's square roots and then there's perfect squares where those square roots are gonna be integers. So they're gonna be whole numbers, either positive or negative. And then cube roots are very similar to square roots, but instead of when we multiply by itself, we actually are gonna multiply it three times, right? Cube meaning to the third power or three, right? We sometimes use that term with cubes and threes, third power. And so then it'll give us that number. And then a perfect cube is cube roots that come out as whole numbers and positives and negatives, integers, okay? So they don't have any decimals or anything like that. They're perfect and clean. So the first thing we're going to do is change decimals into fractions. And so the, when you have a terminating decimal like number or letter A, you first would read the decimal correctly. So this is 825 thousandths. So the way I read it is exactly the way I would write it, 825 thousandths. And then notice it says in simplest form. So we're gonna reduce this as much as we possibly can. So we can reduce it by five. All right, so five goes into eight one time. With three left over, five goes into 32 six times. With two left over, and five goes into 25 five times. And then we've got a thousand. So five goes into 10 two times, none left over, and then we've still got our two zeros. All right, and so then we'll notice that we can actually still uh, divide that by five. So we're gonna do it again. Because again, we have to get it to our simplest form. And so 16 divided by five would get me three. And then I would do, you know, 16 take away 15 get me one, and then five into 15 would get me three again. And then five into 20 gets me four, none left over, and then I add the zero. And so now they do not have anything in common, right? This is three and 11, this is eight and five, or two and 10, but they don't have anything in common. So that would be your simplest form. Now B is a little different because it's a repeating decimal. And repeating decimals have a interesting pattern and trick. So the first thing to do is to take whatever set of digits are repeating and you put them as your numerator. 
So 37 is what's repeating. So I put it as my numerator. Because I have two digits repeating, I will put two nines underneath here. Okay, so first step, take the numbers that are repeating, put them as your numerator, and then however many digits are repeating, that's how many nines you will put as your denominator. Okay, so since these do not have anything in common, that is your simplest form. So what I'd like you to do is pause and try number four, five, and six down below and see if you can come up with the rational numbers for those. And then just remember, be careful with number five. It's that repeating decimal. Okay, so number four, this is 12 hundredths. So I would go 12 over 100, you know, um, reduce by two. That gets me six and 50. And then I notice I can reduce by two again. So I get three over 25. Okay, so this one, I take the numbers that are repeating, 57, as the numerator. There are two numbers repeating. So I'm gonna put two nines. And then I'm gonna check, do they have anything in common? Nope. So that is my simplest form. So this last one's a little tricky because there's a whole number, but we do the same thing. So one and four tenths. So I'm actually just gonna go one and four tenths, 14 over 10. So I ignored the decimal and just stuck it over what I said. And then I'm gonna reduce by two. I'm gonna get seven over five. And the reason I did that is because we're talking about rational numbers, which are just ratios, comparison of two numbers. The other way you could do it is one and four tenths, and then divide by two, and you would get one and two fifths. But when you change it to an improper, those are exactly the same thing. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do is talk about square roots and cube roots. So all of the ones you see in front of you are actually all perfect square roots and perfect cube roots. So remember from our first slide and our definition is that we're looking for the number that I can multiply by itself to get the number in this symbol. So this symbol on this side, this is called a square root. It looks similar to a division, but there's a little extra little check at the beginning. And then on this side, it's the same symbol, but we actually draw a three because we're cube rooting. Okay, so square root has nothing but the symbol and cube root will have a little three with our symbol. So for the first one on the square root side, I would ask myself, what can I times by itself to get one? Well, one times one is one. So the square root, of one is one. So then the next one's actually the example I gave at the beginning. So the square root of four, what number multiplies by itself to get four? Well, two times two gets four. Okay, and we continue the square root of nine. So what multiplied by itself gets nine? Okay, and another way you can think of it is like this, x times x, what is that that's going to get me, you know, 9? Okay, that's kind of what you're being asked. So, what times what is 9? And we would say 3. Okay, square root of 16, 4. Anybody noticing a pattern? Okay, so I'm gonna leave these ones open. I wanna see if you can figure out the pattern and see if you can see what the square roots of all those are. I will give you a hint. This is 15. So cube roots are the same, except now I'm looking for three numbers that multiply together. So instead of just two, right, I'm looking for what 
times what times what will get me, you know, x cubed. And I'm looking for that number. So on this side, right, it's x times x gets me x squared. And we're looking for that number. So for the first one, the cube root of 1, well, that's 1 times 1 times 1. But that still gets me 1. And then the next one, cube root of 8. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 would get me 8. So that's why this is actually 2. So now I want you to notice I'm not dividing. Like for 9, I didn't divide by 2 and get 4 and a half. I'm looking for something that when I times it by itself, both numbers have to be the same. Okay, so notice I'm not dividing by 2. And same with the cube root, I'm not dividing by 3. I'm looking for a number that when I multiply it by itself, it gets me that. So if we look at 27, okay, so 3 times 3, well, that's 9, times 3 is 27. Okay, so it's cube root of 64, so 4 times 4, well, that's 16. If I take 16 and times it by 4, I will get 64. Okay, let's see if you can find the pattern there too. Again, I'll give you a hint. This last one is 15. So down below under the square roots and the cube roots, you'll notice that we have some ratios inside of these square roots. So the way you handle these is you actually will separate these into two. So you'll go cube root or square root, sorry, of nine over the square root of 64. You'll separate them. So I would go and look and be like, okay, so the square root of nine is three and the square root of 64, maybe you got it by now, is eight. So this becomes eight. So my answer is three eighths. So this one again, I'd separate it, square root of 25 over the square root of 100. Well, the square root of 25 is five. Did you get that? Square root of 100 is 10. You still haven't filled these in. You'll notice I'm starting to fill them in for you. So we would say this is 5 over 10. But I can reduce that, and it would actually become a half. So we need to make sure we're reducing those as well. Okay, so you would do the same thing for cube roots. So cube root of 8 was 2. And this is actually supposed to say 1,000. That was a typo, so fix that so it says 1,000. And then we would go cube root of 1,000. So cube root of 8 is 2. Well, cube root of 1,000 is 10. But I got to make sure we reduce it so we should get 1 fifth. So why don't you pause and see if you can do this last one. You might have to go first figure out what the cube root of 7 29 is since I haven't given you that. I did give you the cube root of 64 though. So we would separate it cube root 64 over the cube root of 729. So cube root of 64, remember, was 4. And if you haven't gotten it, it's 9 for the cube root of 729. And those cannot be reduced, so we're just going to leave it. All right, so things to remember, right? Repeating decimals. Denominators. Can't spell. Hmm. 
will be nines. A nine or nines. Okay, so if it's just one digit repeating, then it would be just one nine. But if there's multiple digits repeating, then it would be multiple nines, right? And then remember, we're looking for x times x to get x squared, so that when we take the square root of x squared, we're trying to find x. We're trying to find this one number. And then same, cube root x times x times x will get me x to the third power. And when we cube root, we're really looking for that one x. Okay, that one x. Okay, so here's your independent practice. These will be talked about and checked on when we get back. So you're gonna write um, that as a decimal, you're gonna simplify that, and then just make sure in your notes, um, I think this got typoed as well, so make sure it says a thousand instead of a hundred. Um, again, sorry about that. So there you go, check these, uh, try these independent practice, and then don't forget to fill out your form and your homework um, of 3.5, and if you haven't and you want to, work on some Dreambox. All right, until next time.